Hey there, welcome to another Tea Break Coach. I'm in one of my favourite places in our flat in Tynemouth. So uh, here's a porthole, apparently an original from a ship, I think, and the beautiful view. And I've got a kind of little window seat here. And it's just a brilliant place to sit and think. And I come up with so many ideas when I'm sat here. There's a real theatre thinking that happens. I'll cover theatre thinking on a different call, I think. But um, I wanted to talk to you today about evidence, and this is chapter three in the book, so I'll put a download of this on toprightthinking.com for you. But have you ever tried to influence someone and you feel as though you've got a really good business case, your data really stacks up, and people just don't see things your way? Well, this research will help you to understand why that might be so that you can do something about that with this research in mind. The research was done by Dan Carhan and he's a Yale law professor. So the reason I quite like quoting it is it's quite hard to argue with um, a Yale law professor, right? So we can rely on his work. What he did was got a load of data, tables, graphs and so on. And he presented them initially for people to decide whether skin cream A was better than skin cream B. And what he found is that most people could read the data and decide that A was better than B. They then switched it round and made B better than A, if you went with the data. And they found that still most people could read the data and see that B was now better than A. But what they then did was changed, the, they used the same data, the same graphs, but they changed it so that the data and tables were presenting whether or not carrying a concealed hand weapon led to more gun crime. And this was done in America where obviously emotions run really high on this subject. What I think they thought they would find is that people were selective about the data and started to disregard tables that didn't back up something they already believed to be true. And there was an element of cognitive dissonance, if you've heard that term before. But what they found was even more surprising, that actually when we are faced with data that contradicts something that we hold to be dear, we actually start to not be able to do the maths. Our ability to interpret statistical data is kind of impacted if the data doesn't back up what we already believe to be true. So this has really interesting implications if we're trying to convince somebody to do something or to make a decision at work. Because actually sometimes we think if we just present more data, they will maybe come round to our way of thinking. But what this study helps us to understand is we've got to get a bit deeper than that. We need to understand what beliefs are sitting underneath somebody's apparent resistance. We need to dig a bit deeper to see where we might go, because simply offering up more data may not work. Interestingly, this study also found that if you're quite good normally at interpreting data, this kind of maths brain freeze that you get is even more impactful. It actually affects you more. So if you want to have a bit more information on that, if you just Google the most depressing news about the brain ever, you'll find a couple of articles on it. Um, but I don't think it needs to be depressing because I think actually now we know that that exists for us as human beings, we can actually do something about it. So listen, have a lovely day. I'm going to finish my cup of tea in my favourite spot in the flat. And um, let me know any comments you've got about the session, any questions you've got. And see you next week, hopefully. Bye.